I went to Sarah Lawson there and Christian Bosch.
Good afternoon.
<laughs> Ready to go? Are we going now? Okay. <laughs> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. You're in. We're here. <laughs> We're gathered. What a beautiful day to celebrate. Ryan and Claire, we come rejoicing into the house of the Lord for this celebration and stand with you, Ryan and Claire, on the day you intend to form a home of your own. For them, this is a moment of unique importance, so let us support them with our affection, with our friendship, and with our prayers, their brothers and sisters. Let us listen attentively with them to the word that God speaks to us today. Then with Holy Church, humbly pray to God the Father through Christ our Lord for this couple, his servants, that he may lovingly accept them, bless them, and make them always one. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out on these your servants, Ryan and Claire, that coming together before your altar, they may be confirmed in love for one another, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our glory to God.
Let us pray. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his church, grant, we pray, that these your servants, that what they receive in faith they may live out in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the wilderness, I make a way. In the wasteland, rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the wilderness and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people whom I form the people whom I formed for myself, that they might recount my praise. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God 
and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also must love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. We love because he first loved us. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, an inferior one, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana and Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Seems a little far up there, so I thought I'd come down here, a little conversational. First of all, thanks to all of you who are here to support Ryan and Claire for their wedding today, especially those who drove distances or flew planes to get here. Thanks for being here for them in this unique moment of their lives. I know they're very grateful and appreciate your presence here. Uh, To the parents of Ryan and Claire, especially to you, Mike and Chris, and to you, Tom and Kim, congratulations to you. In some ways, I'm much more of your age than their age, so I kind of feel the, I feel the way this is for you maybe a little bit, you know? It's a new chapter in your lives, Ryan and Claire, but also for your parents. They're seeing you grow up right before their eyes and letting you go. A definitive new chapter as you make these incredibly tender and noble vows today. 
Last night was a unique experience for me as a priest. I've had 100 to 200 weddings in my whole priesthood. I've been here a long time, not here, but as a priest. I've never heard a rehearsal dinner quite like that. It was pretty incredible. And what, what was centered in that for me, because I was formed by the Newman Center at University of Missouri, St. Louis, was how important the Newman Center was to many of the wedding party and others who spoke on your behalf. I've never quite heard that. The stories of faith, stories of building each other up, uh, unique encounters. Uh, one of the bridesmaids or one of the people that was there prayed for us. That was incredible. I've never had that happen before. So I really feel honored to be part of this faith um, explosion, for lack of a better word, of this, this coming to life of your vows today. I think it's awesome. I'm very glad to uh, be part of this. Uh, I met you, Claire, only a few times, notably at Barr's house on Blaine Avenue when we watched the Masters Golf Tournament one afternoon. Uh, the second half, uh, Mike would invite me over and we watched the, the last dramatic finishes of that. And then I met you again uh, on the Zoom meeting, which was a lovely meeting, and I appreciated getting to know you there as well. Ryan, I got to meet you first in 2008, <laughs> nearly half your young life ago, when you were in eighth grade becoming a ninth grader at Bishop DeBorg High School. Uh, I never taught you in the classroom, but I was your golf coach, and I remember seeing you at uh, DBC Live a lot, kind of orchestrating things there, um, as well as being part of K25, Kairos 25, you and Phil and Robbie and Laura, where are you? There you are. So good to see um, the team of four of you, there were six in all, but to see them here at your wedding is a special joy to me as well. Just a brief vignette about Ryan that kind of shows a little bit of character peeking through there. It was when you were a junior or senior in golf, we were at Tower T. And you know, for golf, a wide assortment of kids go out for it. Some of them are really good athletes and some of them are eh, so-so. And so um, Ryan was our most skilled golfer, number one on the team and our leader. Uh, and one day practice at Tower T at the putting green, we were kind of practicing chipping, which is kind of just a slow, easy chip and you forget the ball on the green and have it roll. Well, one of our kids, um, uh, who was not that skilled, hit a chip too hard and went up in the air and hit another kid right in the head. And all of us started laughing. Do you remember this? Vaguely, sort of. <laughs> so all of us started laughing, kind of unconsciously, including me, the priest coach. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> the kid who got hit was kind of socially awkward and very sensitive. He started crying. Okay, yeah, he started crying. He sat down on the edge of the putting green. It was kind of, you know, and you went over to him. So just a small example of your character. So in this Zoom meeting that I had with Claire and Ryan, <laughs> about a month ago, I asked them or challenged them to consider writing a mission statement for their marriage, 12 words or less. This book I was reading called Love Your Enemies, How Decent Americans Can Save, or How Decent People Can Save America from the Culture of Contempt. This author, Arthur C. Brooks, challenged us to write a mission statement for ourselves, and I challenged them to write one for their mission. This is what they wrote. Solid hearts, open hands, joyfully serving God, each other, and others. And you commented on your mission statement to me in an email. The solid hearts comes from a conversation we had early on while dating, which we specifically talked about hearts that are convicted and full of compassion. Open hands refers to our shared desire to take life as it comes and not grasp too tightly to anything of this world. From there, it is important for us to see we are continuously of service through our marriage and we strive to serve with joy. Solid hearts, open hands, joyful service. Not bad, that. So your mission statement alludes to the fact that as you get married today, as important as it is for you, it's not really about you, okay? You become a sacrament today. That first reading that you chose from Isaiah 43, see, I'm doing something new. You become a new creation in Christ, not just for yourselves or even for your nuclear family as it blossoms out as Phil and Lawrence is starting to, but it's also for others to see 
your light and to be seeing Christ in you and how you treat one another. This urge towards um, serving others outside of your marriage even can be seen in that wedding feast at Cana when Jesus' mother turns to him and says they have no wine. And in this process, he is kind of brought out into his publicity, his public miracle to change that water into wine. The ordinary stuff of life, water, becomes incredibly abundant, delicious wine for all to drink. The words of your vows today, which are so common, some of these young men and young women have made them, they're common in the sense that they're often said, but they become supercharged today with God's grace because you're doing it here with this community and because of your baptism in front of me, the church's minister. That becomes a sacrament, light for the world. And Jesus did this first of his public signs to reveal his glory, his divinity shining through his humanity at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, a very human event. And so you, likewise, somehow through your vows that you take today, and as you live your lives out, Christ's glory is meant to shine from you, that others might see and give God the glory. You become a walking sacrament of God's glory and grace. No pressure. It seems you know at a very young age with an obvious maturity that as much as this wedding is not about you, it's really about Jesus, crucified, risen, glorified, in whom you've been baptized. So how you live, how you speak to each other, how you disagree, how you fight fairly, how you encourage and challenge each other, all the decisions you take on in a common life are grounded in how God loved all of us first. It's all a gift. None of us deserved it. None of us were given this gift. And now you share that gift with each other very intimately. We love because he first loved us. So the time has come. Won't you stand now with your wedding party beside you and come on down here? Dearly beloved, you've come into the house of the church so that in the presence of me, the church's minister, and this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord by a special seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you and through a special sacrament now enriches and strengthens those he's already consecrated in holy baptism, that you may be faithful to each other and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you the following questions. Ryan and Have you come here freely to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. All right. Since your intention to enter into marriage, face one another, join your right hands, and declare your consent before God and his church. May the Lord God bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
sign of my love and fidelity in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Congratulations, you're married. Kiss and embrace each other. <laughs> All right, again, congratulations. Brothers and sisters, please stand now as we continue to pray and offer to our God in heaven. We pray for the church, its leaders, its people. May the Lord continue to strengthen the gift of faith in us all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. May those who suffer violence and injustice be brought to peace, safety, and prosperity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, suffering, or alone especially those affected by the coronavirus, and for healthcare workers who provide care. May they find strength and hope in the comfort of God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for married couples and couples preparing for marriage, especially those who are here with us today. May their love for each other be a reflection of God's love for each of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for friends and family gathered here today, as well as those who could not be with us. In humble thanksgiving for their encouragement, support, and unconditional love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Claire and Ryan, who begin their married life today. May they be blessed with family, good health, and an ever-deepening faith in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, especially Francis Barr, Maxine Barr, James Newert, and now Bob Custer. May they live joyfully in eternal peace of God. We pray for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the petitions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we bless you and praise you in the name of your Son, Jesus. Hear these petitions we offer and give good answer according to your will. We pray in his name, Jesus, Lord, forever and ever. Please kneel or be seated as the gifts of bread and wine are brought forward.
other the Almighty. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage between Ryan and Claire. And just as your goodness is its origin, so may your providence guide its course. Through Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. For in him you've made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him in heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and all the saints, we praise you, and without end, we acclaim. And all you have created rightly gives you praise through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit. You give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of this saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, 
Remembering Bridget, for whom this parish is named after, for Claire, for St. Louis, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, David the Bishop in this diocese, all bishops and clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you've summoned before you. Strengthen, we pray, in the grace of marriage, Ryan and Claire, whom you brought happily to their wedding day, that under your protection, they may always be faithful in their lives to the covenant they have sealed in your presence. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We stand now as we continue and offer the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pray humbly to the Lord on, that on these his servants, Ryan and Claire, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart in love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, those he is joined by a holy covenant. Holy Father, maker of the whole world, you created man and woman in your own image and will that their union be crowned with your blessing. We humbly beseech for your servants who are today joined in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing come, Lord, upon this bride, Claire, and upon Ryan, her companion for life. May the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high so that living together the gift of matrimony that may adorn their family with, church, with children and enrich the church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world. And after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may come to the kingdom of heaven. All this through Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer that sign to one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of Holy Communion, we'll be having under the sign of bread only. And for those who are Catholic, you're welcome to come forward if you're practicing your faith and receive our Lord in Holy Communion. For those who are not Catholic but want to show solidarity with the couple, Claire and Ryan, please come forward like this. And Sue or I will be happy to pray for you and give you a blessing. Thank you.
Let us pray. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united in marriage today, for Ryan and for Claire, may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world through Christ our Lord. Special word of thanks again for all of you being present here. I know that Ryan and Claire did that in the program, but again, thank you for being here, especially those of you who have made an extra effort. Grateful to our musicians, thank you so much, and also to the fellow that just came up. Appreciate your administrations to us. Very nicely done. And uh, for all of you who helped prepare this, including the proclaimers of the word, thank you. The Lord be with you. Please give a robust amen to the following blessings for Ryan and Claire as they bow their heads. May God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for each other, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. May Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A couple of other things. Um, The reception tonight will be at Forest Hills Country Club, as you can see in your program, and Ryan and Claire will be glad to receive you there and say hello to you. Also, there is a uh, COVID test in each of the envelopes with your name on it. As you leave church today, if you could grab that and take that between now and the uh, reception, they'd be grateful. And I now present to you Ryan and Claire Barr.
hope it sounded okay. We did our best. Yeah.